Hallelujah. Please be seated in the presence of Almighty God. I have a lot of time this morning, <laughs> and I'm very grateful to the organizers to make sure that we have ample time to sit in his presence. Could we say amen? amen? I want to particularly um, thank the young lady. What's her name? Her, her, Hera. Yes, Hera. May God bless you. Remember this day that this preacher said, May Lord bless you and keep you. May he cause his face to shine upon you and protect you and make you a powerful vessel of honor. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. I also notice a young man that I feel his mother should start to train him to sing in the choir. The <laughs> pastor was watching him. He was, uh, when the choir was singing, uh, the young man, that is, that is how beautiful it is. And I, I want to tell you, I said it last week. I have never seen better behaved children like these ones. In spite of what you may think, you know, you never think your own is good. For example, if I come here and I say, this church is a good church, somebody will be thinking, ah, if he only knows. Eh? If he only knows. No, 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 no. Eh? These kids are good kids. Can we say amen for our children? Because I've been to churches, I could hardly preach. They're running all over the, 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 in front. So it's a blessing to be here again. I want to make a confession that yesterday when I came to preach, I was so sick. But I didn't want to tell anybody. I was feeling so sick. I was wondering, is it the detox from the coconut and the, and the um, watermelon? But then I realized, as soon as I started to preach, I felt well. And I thank God for that. But we have been having some, some demonic interference. And I want to rebuke the devil and say, get out of this place. This is God's house. Also, we have been having a good time this week. Amen? Yes, 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 yes. Yeah. We just want to what? Circulate. Can anybody just say that word? Circulate. I, I want some, this is one time I want some more volume on the mic. Because by now my, my voice is going down. Circulate. Circulate. We are not spending money anymore in Kizungu. We are circulating money. You know, that's what the Jews did. I, I was trained by Jews. I sat at the feet of rabbis. I, I understand them. For example, if there are lawyers, for example, in this church, four or five of them, six of them, whatever, no member of this church should be going for outside lawyers. That's how you circulate money. Hmm? But, but, but what we do is this. Oh, he isn't so good. Use him until he gets good. Hmm? That's how you circulate. There's a principle. The Asians do it. The Jews do it. But I don't know what happened to us. We will know we have a good lawyer here. Anytime you need immigration service, you go to Sam. Circulate. Eh? Because when you bless him, he brings a bigger tide. Circulate. Uh, there are chefs in this church and professional chefs and, and people who sell and, and, and deal with matumba and whatever. Whatever it is, we use our own. So practically, in circulating, we must have an inventory. And I want to charge somebody. Is there anybody who will do it? An inventory to take note of the skills in this church. And anytime we need water, we go to him that sell it water. Are you with me, church? If we need a lawyer, we bring them and we say, can you do? And watch, watch, watch. I'm a businessman. So let me tell you something. Even if you think this lawyer is not a commercial lawyer, still hire him and allow him to outsource so he can make something. Hmm? Yes, yes, yes. That's, that's how you grow a community. So by the next camp meeting, 
before we even have to raise any money and ask for money circulation because for the whole year we have been just circulating we're not spending we're circulating no no i don't want to just talk for talking sake i want us to actually do it is there any volunteers this is a practical meeting today is there any volunteer i want somebody to make an excel sheet if you don't already have it of the skill sets that exist in this church can i have a volunteer somebody kind of savvy with putting together data is there a data scientist here <laughs> Ah, come on, I, I know you, you people are educated people. You have gone to the schools of the prophets. I need a, a, a let, let's stand up, stand up, sis. May God bless you for your effort. May you get those things for us so that we can start circulating. And I want us to be practical about this and anybody make excuse, oh, not to use Brother Sam or not to use this lawyer or not to... Yeah. We'll deal with them. Elder, we'll deal with them. <laughs> we use our own, we are circulating, amen? Okay, let me see if I can preach this word. I want to preach sometimes as a preacher it's a very difficult task because all that I have to use at my disposal to articulate God is words and words are so inadequate as a container of thought because my words are my thoughts half murdered. In my head, it's more profound than when it comes to my mouth. I lose information in the process of translation. So it, it, it's a task for a preacher to try to fit a God that is infinite, a God that is not finished, a God that is beyond, beyond, a God with no borders, no boundary, and cannot be defined, and I have words to articulate him. Even in your own culture and your own language, if I were to try to translate from Lu to Kikuyu, or from Kikuyu to, to, to Luya, or some other language, by the process of translation, you lose information and there can be misunderstanding. Are you with me? So just imagine that God is in heaven. He's infinite and he has asked me to come to preach, to articulate things that cannot be grasped and cannot be fit in words. And therefore, when a man is trying to preach, you must have mercy upon him and pray for him while he's talking. Are you with me? Because it's a difficult task. And, and sometimes, God is having conversations with me, and I'm just allowing you to eavesdrop on that conversation. And sometimes, the conversations with God is not very orderly. It can be discombobulated. And that is why Paul said, through the foolishness of preaching, because God has a way of using the foolishness of this world to confound the mighty. Out of this foolishness of preaching, out of a little boy who grew up in a little island with 1.2 million people who couldn't talk so well, who was very illiterate and all these things, now he has brought me here to, for me to express in words the profundity of divine truth to try to express a God whose presence is so tremendous. I want to talk at the beginning about God's presence. God's presence again cannot be articulated because sometimes we try to explain God's presence as light. 
light, 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 light. But I want to tell you from a Hebrew perspective, light cannot be seen. You can only see that which light reveals. Na, na, na. Now, hear me. Light cannot be seen, but you can only see that which light Reveal so so that when you think you're having light, you're really having that which light has revealed, and therefore you have a step down. You have a a a a, 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 a smaller version of that which the light is. Are you with me, church? I'm just carrying you somewhere. If there is anybody sleeping next to you or looking at their phone, if, if, if there's anybody, put your phone away and it is preaching time in the kingdom of God. Are you with me, church? Yes, yes, yes. Be your brother's keeper. If you see a phone, what, who are you texting? Who can you be texting now? Hmm? And your wife, anyway. <laughs> I, <laughs> The, 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 the presence of God is what we should seek after. That is why David, as I said, was considered a man after God's heart. It's not that his heart was like God, but he was a man whose heart was in pursuit of God. And it doesn't matter how much sins you commit. Yes, there is a Bathsheba in your life and, and, and you have a little situation, but somehow when you are pursuing God, when you are coming after God and you're saying, yes, I know I'm weak, Jesus, but, but I'm coming after you. I'm in the press. I'm in the press. You will say, you are a man after my heart. The psalmist David was blowing kisses to God. He was writing poems. You know, you know, some of you like to write poems for your girlfriend and boyfriend. And now with chat GPT, you can now just <laughs> let me talk to this side. With chat GPT and AI, you can now put her name and type in the characteristic that you want and bloop, 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 a beautiful poem. Is there anybody in this place know what I'm talking about? Yes, yes. So, so, so David was writing poems and he was a man after God's own heart. He was a man who sought the presence of God. There are too many Christians that seek the power of God without having the presence of God. Saul was such a person. When you see, seek the positions of God and you don't want to have the presence of God, you find yourself without favor and you find yourself blighted and cannot fulfill your mission and then you get jealous of the David in your life and you throw javelins at him because the presence of God is with him. Whether he was in the wilderness shoveling sheep down, he still had a king anointing on him because he was in the presence of God. I tell you, people right now, I know the president is in Mombasa and people will like just to be in the presence of the president. But don't you know what it is to be in the presence of God? Don't you know what it is? In this presence, there is joy forevermore. There's no sadness in the presence of God. By the way, by the, watch, 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 watch. You know when a president or a king or somebody is traveling, you have the security details go ahead of them. Yeah, it, it, it's like trying to, to your, your, and, 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 and for those of us who have an idea how security works, you create a security bubble for the main man, uh, the, the main person. There is a security bubble. Bubble. They go to, 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 to see what is happening. You, you remember recently we had Trump. You know Trump. Yeah, yeah. We know Trump. But that's the first Trump. But I'm looking forward for the second Trump. <laughs> you, you, you'll get me another time. The second Trump. Yeah, when that trumpet sound. That's what I'm looking for right now. Uh, 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 please excuse me. I'm just taking my time and preach today. Today, I'm not rushing. Are you with me, church? Yes, yes just allow me to be myself and, and, and preach. So, so, the presence of God. He sought the positions without the presence. And this presence is powerful because Lucifer, Lucifer, the, 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 the Latin word Lucifer comes from the word phosphorus. 
He was the lighted one. He was the light bearer. He, 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 he was the light bearer. Now watch me now. He was the light bearer. And the Bible says in Psalm 104 verse 4 that angels were made with fire. But Lucifer was made with precious stones. His body was different because he went into the presence of God. And every time he went in the presence of God, he will be lit with the glory of God. And he will come out of the presence of God. And he was the light bearer. He bore the light. And because he bore the light, he had more influence than everybody because he was a light bearer. The presence of God will be so powerful that angels, now, 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 now what? Angel will say, Holy. Now, be before I say that, before I say that, if, when you use Microsoft Word, if you want to highlight something, you will use bold or you will have italics uh, just to say it. But in Jesus' time, if you want to show something serious, you will say, verily, verily. But when it comes to God and the angels are in his presence, they will say, holy and they try to get up in the holy mean separate. He's there but far. He, that, that dichotomy. Holy. And then if it's not, if it's twice, then they had to go a third time. Holy. Because the presence of God is so powerful. And I have found that we have gotten so accustomed to church that we could come to church and don't crave his presence. And I know that because I see people, in, and, and, and I'm not bashing anybody, but I can tell. Because I'm telling you, if the president was to come here, you will have people with a kind of attention. And, and, and there will be a kind of reverence for him. But I want to tell you that God has better secret service agents. <laughs> God agents are invisible. And one of them, if he releases that one commando soldier he can kill 185,000 like in the days that you you know 185,000 just one angel one secret service agent that goes before God is the only CEO of the universe who is where he is he is here and he's in the future he's God and we have gotten so used to his presence that we have a tendency of taking it for granted. The Bible says God is exceedingly great. Now I'm building, I'm going somewhere. Just follow me. God is exceedingly great. It means to say, Jacob, if you meet him here, at Bethel, the house of God, by the time you go and come back, it's El Bethel, the God of the house of God. If you meet him, Moses, as a burning bush, by the time you return, not the bush is on fire, it's the month of Sinai is on fire because he's an exceeding God. He always exceeds his greatness. And so, his presence is exceedingly, when Aaron, 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 Aaron put his rod in the presence of God, when he was challenged by Korah, Dathan, and Abiram, and hear me church, and hear me ministers and elders and leaders in this congregation, anytime you are challenged by the Korah, Dathan, and Abiram in the church, and they challenge you, don't fight or get into words with people. Just sit like the rod in the presence of God. And God will make your rod bud, blossom, and bear fruits overnight. God likes to bless you. And when you see your enemies are fighting you, just take out your best cutleries and your knife and fork and get ready to eat. Because the Bible says, Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. When you see your enemies, you must start to... Because when you see your enemies, you know it's time to have supper. 
Huh? It's time for supper. When people are fighting the church, it's time for supper. Because he prepares a table before you in the presence of your enemies. And, and, and now I'm just building. Let me transition with this one point. When Jesus was about to die, his very avid servant by the name of Peter said, You, you, Jesus, please don't go. You can't go to Jerusalem. And when he was telling him, Please don't go to Jerusalem, Jesus rebuked him and called him, You devil! You are your devil. You are preventing me from my mission. But when he met Judas, when he met Judas, he called Judas friend. <laughs> he, he, he called Judas friends. I want you in this church, when church service is over, just go by these friends and shake their hands because it's your friends that usher you to the kingdom. Thank you, friend. Yes, you criticize me. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for resisting my elder eldership. From the time I became the deacon, the head deacon in this church, you have been fighting me. You have been trying to embarrass me. Thank you. Eh? Thank you, friend. And greet them with a kiss. Don't fight people. Are you with me, church? So let me try to move on a bit with this message that is taken from Kings, the Queen of the South. So because God is so powerful, because God is so powerful, he has made man, and I preached about this this week. He has made man in his image. When the Bible says, and I'm taking my time to teach a bit, eh? when the Bible says we were made in his image, it's not that we look like God. God don't have features to have a look. And that's a deep theological thought. God don't have hand and foot. When the Bible talks about the hand of God, it is more talking about function over form. So when the Bible says we are made in his image, it means to say that we should behave like him, not look like him. Are, are, are you with me? So when you are called a Christian, there are too many Seventh-day Adventists want to be called, oh, I'm the first I'll in this church. I'm the, I'm the dear deacon. I'm the, I'm the president of the chicken frying committee. Mm, it is me who make the ugali and the gluten. It is me. Do you have respect for me? Because men are preoccupied with titles as opposed to doing. So you have a lot of people who are big. You know who I am? And I am big in this church. But they are not doing anything but... Oh God. But, but, but just criticize. Watch, 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 watch. The Bible begins like this. Let me give you a little Hebrew. The Bible begins like this. It begins... Bereshit bara et hashamahim et hararets. Let me explain what that means. It begins by saying, In beginning, English said beginning... God created. But in Hebrew, it said beginning created God. Before you give a name, people must see what you... Let me talk to this side. Before you give your title, people must see what you're doing. Eh? You don't have to go around and say, I am this and I am that by my fruit. You shall know them. Just watch me work. Don't say nothing. Don't talk too much. Just... Do. What, what, what? The problem I have with so many churches is that there are so few people that do. In most churches, there's about five or six people that do. And then the ones that don't do criticize those that do and say they like to do. Oh God, you know. <laughs> it's amazing. And, and, and I tell you, I have not heard anything, but I know how our people are. But I want to tell somebody today, when people talk about you, just keep on walking and walk like a Jamaican. We from the Caribbean. <laughs> huh? Just keep on walking. Just keep on doing. The Bible says, whatsoever ye do, 
do it shall prosper. You have to be doing something to prosper. There is no circulation without doing. God never, watch, watch, watch. God never call an idle person. It was always somebody doing. David in the field doing and he got anointed. Paul was, Saul was looking for some lost oxen he was doing. They were fishing, Peter and John, doing. Watch, watch. He said, whatsoever you do it. So let me just make this point and I'm moving on. I'm transitioning. Are you with me, church? There are people who sometimes come to me while I'm preaching and they say, you know, I just, I, I, I'm, I, I'm, I'm looking for a job or I'm looking for this or I want to. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you this. What? The secret don't worry. Don't worry about this. The secret. Just watch the preacher, not his waist. <laughs> come, buddy, come, come and just fix this for me, please. Let's come and put it in for me, please. Thank God I have on a belt. <laughs> Where? It would have been pressure in this church today. <laughs> it would have been like David dancing his linen effort. <laughs> mm. Thank you, thank you. This is the Caribbean man in me. I can't sit still. I, 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 I try to sit. Let me see if I can preach from right here. Is there any handcuff? Is there any handcuff you have here? Any security personnel come and just handcuff me to this thing? Because I, I can't keep still. So, so, so. I, I, I'm just going. You see, today is the last time I'm getting to speak to so many. So I'm going from points from what I preached before and I'm preaching back and forth as I'm going. So hear me, church. I want to talk to people hard. Do not apologize for the work you do in church and for God in spite of criticism because God will bless you. Men awards, but God reward and God said, I will reward you. Just keep on working for God. And he sees in secret where your heart is. And ignore. When, when Abraham was about to go to worship. Huh? When Abraham was about to go to worship. He says, stay here with the asses. Yes, the Bible have that word. I can use it. Stay here with the asses. I and the lad is going yonder to worship. Let me tell you something. When you are going to worship and serve, sometimes you have to keep some behind. Hmm? And you just go up and do God. So, 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 so. so God made us in his image so that we can function like him and behave like him and when he he made man i'm building this thing i'm building i'm building that i have some water there somebody can you my my dear sister please i'm i'm getting too hot now let me cool along this fire yes yes hey by the way you look so lovely pastor the church looks so lovely today. They are alive. The phone is on the desk. The people in the balcony is watching online. What a good thing for brethren to dwell together in unity. Huh? It's such a wonderful thing when we can come in the presence of God. Huh? It didn't change the wine this time. But one day, one day, one day, yes. So, God made us in his image, watch, so that we can behave like him. Because God cannot explain too much with words. He likes to demonstrate because the optic nerve that sends message from the, the brain to the eyes are 500 times larger than the auditory nerve. Now follow me church, I'm, I'm now transitioning in my message. The, order, the optic nerve is 500 times larger than the auditory nerve. Therefore, a, 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 a sermon lived is greater than a sermon preached. People rem remember more what they see as opposed to what they hear. So God has made us 
to be doers. And he said, wow, watch, 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 watch. This little girl is paying a lot of attention. Shake, shake the picture hand. Mambo. Yeah? Watch, watch. He said, when he made man, he said, you should have dominion over me. I have my picture with my offerings in the next five minutes up on the screen because I'm transitioning. He said, you should have dominion. You know what dominion is? Domain. Dominion means territory. The church of God should always be conquering land. Watch this point. This point I'm going to make is a very important point. When the Bible says, I'm the God of heaven and earth, it was always when his people was conquering land and earth. But when he said, I'm the God of heaven, it means to say we were just heavenly minded and have no earthly good. But I want to make a first announcement in Kizingo Church that God will be a God of heaven and earth. That we will be, yes, in heaven, but we will conquer here. I want to thank God in advance for blessing of that building and blessing with more satellite church and blessing the radio station so the gospel can be preached in Swahili. Huh? I'm tired of this. He said, I, 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 have, I have given you dominion. Now watch, watch, watch. Dominion over the fish of the sea. Dominion over the cattle and dominion over the fowls of the air. But, but, but wait a minute, preacher. Wait, 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 wait preacher. He gave man dominion over birds over fish, over creepy things. But, but, but if your woman next to you don't have feathers on or scales, you're not supposed to have dominion. Uh, let me talk to this side. Um, if, if that woman, if that woman, I don't care what your culture say, if that woman next to you don't have no scales and don't have fins and don't have feathers, you're not supposed to have dominion over her. That's a wrong orientation. You're supposed to have dominion over things. Not a woman? Are there any women in the house? You're too silent. You're not supposed to dominate. Some of us are dominate. Dominate. Oh, you wash my shoulder. Bring my ugali. Bring my tea. Do this and dominate him. But when you're made in the image of God, you are a server and you are a giver. And I'm coming there just now. Just wait with me. I'm going to show you just now. I'm coming. I'm coming. When you're made in the image of God, you dominate. Let me give a few examples of domination. Domination is Joshua. Joshua is in a battle and the sun is going down. And because he had dominion over the birds of the sky and things of the sky, he said, look out here, look here, look here. Sun, thou stand still over Gibeah. And thou moon over the valley of Ajalon. <laughs> that is domination. That is how God's church is supposed to behave. So right now, if we need some money, somebody just supposed to walk out and say, money come. Yeah? I know some of you, it sounds Pentecostal and it sounds prosperity gospel. But I'll prove to you that God still has the recipe for manna. Let me say to this side, you feel you don't have the recipe. God still have the recipe for manna. He could still rain it down, dominate. He said, he say, let me show you something. Ah, watch, watch, watch. What domination is in a man. In a man. I want to teach men what to dominate a woman looks like. To dominate a woman looks like this. When her axe has fallen in the water and there is no way she could get it out she sends for you because she knows you are a man of God and even though it will defy natural laws you are so anointed that you can take a stick a dead stick and throw it in the water and see the axe head rise real men perform miracles in their house that's domination. Don't worry, honey. Don't worry, honey, honey. Don't worry. I'll find the school fees. 
hey, I'll find the school fees. And you walk out like a real man. Huh? And when you come home, you kill the, you, you already kill the cow and you put it on the table and she watch you with her eyes are sparkling and she's thinking already, oh God, let me talk. These people are too holy. When you bring cow on the table for that woman, that is domination. Are you with me? Are you, I speak in hints because they are children. You know what I'm talking about. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> dominate him. Moses, Moses, yes, you can you can't talk too well. You you can't talk too well, but 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 you can act. Throw your stick down. That's your dominate. And your stick will eat up the serpent. God wants some of us here to throw our stick down. What do you have in your hand today? Did you bring your circulation stuff? Huh? Did you bring your circulation? I want some of you to throw your stick down today. Huh? Throw it down. And for those of you who have business, it's your staff. Moses, the old man, and I wish I had time. The old man never lost his, 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 his stutter and his stick. He always had his stutter and his stick. This thing that is an impediment and still you have power. Because God have a way of having some thorn in your flesh that you could know that you need to humble yourself because if it wasn't God that was on my side. Are you with me church? Last, last one with domination. Let me go, go on and do spell. Jesus <laughs> <laughs> Jesus show how to dominate. So what? What? So your wine, your wine run out. There's no money. There's no wine. Not sufficient resources. He said, fill your water pots. Here's the principal church. Follow me. To get any miracle in church, we must first do our part. Lazarus. I want to raise him, but you better roll the stone away first and let me do my part to call him out. You cannot change water into wine, but you better fill the water pot first. Then I will change it into wine. What I'm trying to say, E.G. White say, the miracle of the loaves and fish happens every day. It's just we don't notice. So the point I'm making I want some people to bring their stuff, bring your water, bring your stone, and then God will multiply it. But you have to act. And watch me. I'm not even using psychology. I'm just using Bible. Bring your little bits and circulate it and watch something. Are you with me, church? Yes, 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 yes. yes. And you know why? You know why he changed water to wine? Let me give you this point and I'll move away. Wine, if you follow, those of you who have done physics and, you know, I know you are bright people. This is, this is, the, the, the law of enthalpy states that everything degenerates with time. Everything degenerates with time. You think about it, everything gets bad with time. But the reason why the Bible used wine, because wine is one of the only elements that gets better with age. Hence the reason why the Bible used wine as an analogy for the Holy Spirit and your walk with God. Your walk with God is supposed to get better with time. Are you with me, church? It's get better and better as the days keep going. So he turned the water into wine. No, 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 no. no. Hey, my children are still paying attention. Very good, very good. You're still paying attention. Now, last point and I transition in again. This is my second transition. I have two more. Are you still awake? Is there anybody sleeping next to you? Okay. If there is anybody, just please. That elbow. In Jesus' name. Eh? In Jesus' name. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> don't sleep spread of prophecy says the devil comes and he fans people to sleep so you need to be your brother's keeper watch watch 
Jesus needed some money for Peter to pay tax. The church needed money for camp. Jesus needed money for tax. It was an obligation and it was upon them. It was a time of paying tax. And KRA will send a notification in your email that is tax time or else. You, you know what I'm talking about. Yes, yes, yes. It has really sent them. And there is no money. But I want to show you what it is to dominate. Jesus said, I am the one who have dominance over the fish of the sea. Go by the sea. Eh? And throw your hook inside that water and see what come up. And that fish had a coin to pay the tax. The point I'm making, church, listen to me. God is quite capable of providing for his church. It's just we need to express the faith. And to go with your hook and throw it in the water and know that a fish will come out. And I am preaching this week because I want a fish. I'm looking for a fish. Is there, are there any fish inside of here? Yes, I think two gege has been prepared for me. Fish. Uh, by the way, I hope I find money in that fish. I'll, I'll donate it. I'll give it to the church. <laughs> watch, watch, watch. So, so, so God is able to provide. And the reason why God give us dominance is because God by nature, God by nature is a giver. Church, follow me. Don't sleep now. God by nature is a giver. The Hebrew word for loving and the Hebrew word for giving has the same root. Now I'm getting into some deep theological stuff. Just walk with me. I have, I have. The word for giving and loving is one word split in a few parts because you cannot love without giving. In fact, the Bible said, God so love that he you see, there is something called Hebrew parallelism where it expresses itself in one place, then it expresses itself in another place, even using a different word. But the same concept for God, so love the world that he, because love and giving is always in the same sentence. And that is why the Bible says, watch me mothers. No, I'm only talking to women. Women, the Bible calls God El Shaddai. The Hebrew word for shadiai is the breasted one. Is the breasted one. Are, are there any mothers here who had to go to work while you were nursing a child? And while you were there, the breasts start to get heavy. <laughs> let, let, me, let me see if any mothers on this side will, 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 will. Do you know what I'm talking about? When your breasts start to get heavy with the milk, it gets so heavy, it starts to pain. Are there any women in here? Your breast gets so heavy, El Shaddai, that you have a need. Watch, 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 watch. Is you want the child to drink, but you also have a need for the child to suck. Because you need relief. God says, I am El Shaddai. My breast is so heavy. You know what is so powerful, so painful, that your breast could be heavy with milk and the child is not there to suck and then you see the child malnourished flies coming out their nose they're getting skinny and all you're saying come darling kuchi kuchi ku kuchi kuchi ku come and take hmm? and some of you children i my mother told me i did it why sometimes we are taking milk ask any mother the worst experience is a child to, with those gums why that one with those gums, are there any mothers in the house? Huh? So sometimes God feels pain. He said, church, my breast is heavy with milk. I lack nothing. I just ask you to come and suck. The breasted one, come and feed. But instead, watch, 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 watch. Instead, you have a very bright person that says, you know the content of milk, uh, the colostium is protein, and this and that, and it, it, it's come like if if this water is here, 
and I'm sweating like this, and somebody come and say, you know, this is water. In chemistry, this is H2O. Two parts of hydrogen and one part of oxygen. This thing is so good. <laughs> it is so good. And you're thirsty to death, just talking. And you're dying of thirst while there is water. That is what we do. We can talk and the talk as a people. But God wants you to take a, take a sip. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Taste and see. Take a sip. Then you know. So what we have, a lot of theories. A lot of theories. And no real thing. So, so, so God is a natural giver. This week I spoke to you about man was built to be the giver. It's more blessed to give than to receive. A woman is a receptacle. I liken it to the church and all these things. But I'm going to skip that. I'm going to skip that to say, watch, 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 watch. Brethren, please. Could you stand to your feet? Stand to your feet quickly, everybody. Stand to your feet. This message is too important for people to sleep. Stand to your feet. I am on my feet. Therefore, I'm going to preach. And you stand to your feet. No, you can sit down. It's okay. You can sit down. I just wanted to wake up those, those ones who the devil is fanning. Watch, 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 watch. I'm, I'm, I'm coming. I'm, I'm going to try to close just now because I'm breaking my fast in the next 45 minutes or so, so I'm happy. So let me rush to it. If if the trade unions in any country get this point I'm making, countries will be good. In every country, people focus on rights. Now listen to this point. It's a profound point. And I wish some human rights person or somebody get it who is here. There is rights and there is obligation. But the world is built on rights. Oh, I want my rights. It's my right to vote. It's my right to do this. But the Bible is built on obligation. Now watch me. It's, it's a very subtle point, but hear me. When a church or a country don't focus on rights, but focus on obligation, you get your rights as a result of the focus on obligation. Because I have an obligation to feed you. I have an obligation to reach in church early so I can get the mic working. I have an obligation to do this. I have an obligation as a teacher to come. When you fulfill your obligation, you are more guaranteed of your rights. You see, because this is a giving side. God is a giver. And if I was talking to Mary folks, I would have gone into that, but I speak in hints. If you focus on obligation you will be fulfilled naturally. Are you with me? Yes, 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 yes. So let me transition. Hey. I may have to finish this thing this evening, but hey. <laughs> so the, you see my picture there? I wonder how clear it is. I was trying to show the offering. <clears throat> Anyway, watch, watch, watch. So because God made men like him, and he put man in a garden, and men ate, watch, men ate what God told them don't eat. Transatlantic, trans mean to cross a line. Transgression, God put a boundary, he said don't eat this tree, eat all the rest. They transgress and they crossed the line and ate and therefore they were put out the presence of God. They were put out the garden of God and God required them to get back in his presence to bring an offering. Now, now, now I'm going somewhere, watch me. To get back in his presence, he needs, you need to bring an offering. And the word offering in Hebrew and sacrifice is a few words and just let me take time to to digest them i can sense people are getting tired do you want me to continue in the evening 
Huh? Do you want me to continue? I will not. I'm going on for the next little while. Hear me, watch, watch, watch. So, they were cast out of the Garden of Eden, so God wanted to bring them back to himself. So the Hebrew word for Leviticus is viakra. Viakra means I call you. Watch. When you understand this, Leviticus becomes easy. So God is calling his people. And the say, he says, the way you come is that you come with a korban. An offering. The Hebrew word for korban means to connect, to join, to come, to draw close. So an offering was a way for people not to give up something. The word sacrifice suggests that you are giving up something. But when you give to God, in the Hebrew, you're actually drawing close and you're getting an elevation. Watch, watch, watch. Different concept. So because I, 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 I may explain this evening more, there were five offerings. Watch, watch. There were five offerings. And by the way, if you pay attention, only two of them, one of them really dealt with sin. The Ola, the burnt offering, had nothing to do with sin. It is, was burned completely, and it was a free will offering that you did voluntarily. You bring it in the presence of God. And watch me. The altar... The offering was called Ola. Ola means to raise. So the altar was a, like an elevator. When you bring an offering, God elevates you. Are you with me, church? So the way the system was designed, it was to elevate you as you bring an offering in the presence of God. And let me try to see if I could close. I, 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 I am sensitive, by the way. Let me, let me say this slowly. Watch, watch, watch. I am very sensitive when I'm talking. I actually watch people. That is why I don't get self-conscious. Because I'm actually watching you, not myself. Uh, so, so I'm seeing you are tired. So I'm going to see if I can bring this. So I just want your attention for a few more minutes before I go on. It's amazing. You get tired in the presence of the Let me see if I can bring this down. So, you see, I'm closing my Bible. Let me put a marker so I can know where to go back. Watch, watch, watch. So that they were to bring an offering. But you can never come in the presence of a king without an offering. Before I came to Africa, before I came to Kenya, I didn't understand that very well. But when I came to Kenya, I have some Kikuyu friends. And every time they are going to meet their Shosho or, or Guka or whatever it is, they will stop and buy milk. Huh? You know, they will buy some sugar or some milk. You know where you get that principle from? Scripture. You don't go to your mother's house without carrying something. Isn't that true? When on Christmas, you have to go back home in the village. You know what's the headache? If I go back to the village, I have to carry shopping. I have to pay for gasoline. I have to, and then the people there think, you come from Nairobi or Mombasa, so you have a lot of money. Huh? So you cannot go in your mother's house without an offering, without something. However, you will never leave your mother's house empty-handed. In fact, you live there with more matoke and flour and maize and sugar cane. You go back with more than we brought. Well, the scripture has the same principle. But because we have been so used to come in the presence of God with our hands empty. We will go to mom with our hands full. But we come to God because we don't. And the reason why, Sam, I can tell you as my friend, let me use your name. The reason why some of us are so blight, we are not using the principle of the kingdom. Because the way kings, the way kings operate, you have to come in their presence with an offering. But you will always leave with more than you came with. 
Mm, you will always leave. And if you were to study the culture of the day, watch, watch, watch. And I'm, I'm coming to a close. Just bear with me, people. But I have to make the point properly. I need to land it well. You have to bring something in the presence of the king. And the bigger the king, the more you bring. But the more you left with. Because the glory of a king, and I want you to think about Solomon, for which my text is. The glory of a king was based on his wealth. And based on how much thing he has conquer and dominance over. So to impress a king, you will bring a lot of gifts before him well the bible tells us there was a woman who wanted to go in solomon's presence she wanted to go in solomon's presence to hear of his wisdom and the bible tells us she moved from some of us believe is yemen others believe is ethiopia but i believe is ethiopia for other reasons but 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 she came and she bought camels and and goats and cows and all these things with gold and silver and all kind of wood for Solomon to inquire of his wisdom. And I'm going to cut it short here by reading the text and we will continue this evening. The Bible says in 1 Kings chapter 10. 1 Kings chapter 10. Hear what the Bible says. 10 verse 12. The woman, when she saw Solomon, the Bible says she had no spirit in her. It means that she, she got breathless. When she saw his men, his chamberlains, his gold, his lions around his throne, he was so impressed. Even though he was rich, she brought a lot of things. And the Bible says in verse 13 of 2 Kings, 1 Kings 10, 13, and King Solomon gave unto Queen Sheba all her desires, whatsoever, all her desires, whatsoever she asked. Besides that, Solomon gave her all of his royal bounties. So she turned and went to her own country. She and her servants, and for those of us who have studied the Bible know, she went back with her child. Solomon was not easy. That's why we have the Ethiopian Jews. Watch me, watch me. Here is the principle. When you come in the presence of the Lord, watch, watch, watch. When you come in the presence of the Lord, when you come bearing gifts, God will always make you leave with more than you came with. Even though the queen of the south, the Bible says the queen of the south, the queen of Sheba, will rise up and judge this generation because a greater than Solomon is here and she traveled through the deserts of Arabia. She had so much heat in the day and cold in the night. She, it, she walked a hundred and five, 1,500 miles just to see a man to bring a gift. And if I had time, I would have told you that the, Mag the Magi's when they heard there was a king, they brought gifts for Jesus because he was a king. They brought frankincense and, and myrrh and all kind of perfume because you can't come in the presence of a king with your hands empty. And it is wrong to come in God's church without a gift. Without a gift. And we said, Today and from now on, every time we come, we must come with our hands like this. And I assure you, you will go back with your hands filled. Because when you come in the presence of God, he will ensure you don't go empty-handed. Could we stand to our feet? I came to preach more than you had stamina for, even though I was just in coconut water. 
I came to preach more than you had stamina for, but I will stop. But at the same time, brethren, we have agreed that we will circulate. We will circulate. We will bring our gifts and our offerings before God so that God could multiply it. And I want to tell Kizingo Church, even though you have had sermons before, that is asking you to bring things before God. Sometimes God anoint a particular time, like how we had, he, they, were, they were casting their nets all the time casting the nets and there was nothing but this particular time i want to ask everybody just to sit still while i make my appeal please just don't move about too much i'm closing yes 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 i'm closing don't move too much hear me out church hear me watch watch sometimes you have been called to make sacrifice and nothing has happened but somehow i feel God has called me for such a time like this. I have never made an appeal in my entire life as a Christian for people to bring gifts. But I'm asking you today because I want to hear the testimonies, you see, that God, we will agree that when we cast it in the offering bowl this time that all god will be doing is to circulate it if there is anybody believe in god's word today could you raise your hand and say amen are we committing to give and to act in the image of god god is a consummate giver we'll continue to this evening nobody leave this compound the only person who should leave is me to go and change this wet clothes. Everybody stay back so that we can discuss and close off this thing in a glorious way. Where are you going? Today's Sabbath. Huh? <laughs> oh yes, we're going for... Okay. Let's bow our heads and close our eyes. Father, I didn't finish I don't think I landed well. But I rely on the spirit that comes from heaven. Speak to every heart in this church. I have come to my end, oh God, I'm finished. My voice, my preaching is not sufficient to overcome sleep. But I hope I'm anointed enough like Paul that if people fall asleep, I can go down when they break their necks and touch them back to life. Say the resurrection power in Kizingo Church. God, this week and the surrounding churches, the sister church, forgive me, I forget the name, but God, you know them by name. The sister church of this church. God, today, touch us afresh. Let us have a revival, a unity that is beyond explanation. And those folks who may be filled with animosity and all these things, may we, oh God, make up, hug up, kiss up, and move on to glory. Bless your people and the pastor, his assistant, and all those who are working hard to see this church succeed. I thank you for doing it. I ask you to make up where I fail, oh God, because I'm a mere man. But oh God, you have your way. In Jesus' name, may the church say amen. amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you, cause his face to shine upon you. In Jesus' name.